This tutorial is to help you with section 4C, question number 3. Um, I've changed this up a little bit, so it's not the exact one, but the procedure is still the same. The question is, how much buying power would $50,000 have 20 years from now if we assume an annual inflation of 3.2%? Okay, because inflation is a future value, meaning that in 20 years from now, our $50,000 will have a less value we kind of need to look at our problem a little bit backwards. So please recall that uh, our formula, A, or the final amount, equals P, or the initial amount, times the parentheses 1 plus the APR uh, raised to the Y. Now because I want um, to find 50,000 before it gets to that point, so that's why I'm looking at it backwards. Uh, another way of thinking about it is A is typically um, a larger value because P is the initial value. So I have the initial and I compound it annually with the APR and then I end up with a larger value. So what I'm looking at is that 50,000 is going to be the A and I'm looking for the P. So I type this in using the equation editor by insert equation and I typed it all in. I'll hurry and do that quickly just in case you haven't seen me do this yet. And I just typed in my formula A equals P and then I type parenthesis 1 plus APR close parenthesis and then uh, that was with uh, shift 9 and shift 0 for the parentheses and then I do shift 6 for the caret to raise it to the Y and I'm going to capitalize my Y then if I press the space bar it'll just format it for me if yours isn't doing that you can go up here and use all of your formatting structures so I can create fractions uh, my superscript is here and I would type everything in this box and then type the Y here uh, also, there are the bracket functions that give you the uh, box of where you can type things in, but it's faster this way. Okay, so now that I have my formula all typed in, I'm looking at it backwards. So what I need to do is either plug all of my information in or I, and solve it for P, or I can solve it for P and then plug everything in, which is what I'm going to go ahead and do. Now, if, because I want... Uh, 50,000 to be the final amount so because I'm looking at this backwards I want to find out what it, the smaller number will be when all of this compounding happens okay so the first thing I want to do is isolate the P because it's P times all of this I can isolate it by dividing both sides by all of this which I've shown down here. So isolating it on this side, all of this, and I'm going to go ahead and strike through to say I'm canceling this out with this on the bottom. Pardon me. There we go. Strike that out. There we go. So now I'm all left with P on the right. And because I like it on the left, I'm going to just go ahead and flip-flop that equation and I get P equals a over 1 plus APR to the Y. A lot of you are thinking, well, wait a minute. Inflation is 20 years from now. That's what we're looking at. So why am I reversing the A and the P? This is just a means to the end. The A and the P are um, just a way for us to remember the amount initial and the amount final. What we're doing is we're using the same process to find out um, if I have a compounding of 3.2% annually, what is the smaller number in this case because I'm looking for the lesser value it doesn't necessarily mean that a has to be um, the final amount in 20 years from now and P is the initial amount um, that we're starting with now it's the process of this is the compounding that's occurring I hope that's okay if not write me an email and I'll try and figure out a better way to explain that Okay, so now that I have this solved for P, and I have the larger amount here and the smaller amount there, all I have to do is plug everything in and calculate it out. So A is 50,000 
and I've typed that in. Uh, and I have APR of 3.2%, so I'm going to change that to the decimal, 0 0.032, and Y is 20 years. I have four different ways of calculating this using all of my different um, tools that, in my bag. The first thing I'm going to do is use the actual calculating uh, process in Microsoft Word, which is really cool. So I'm going to just copy this part copy and paste it down here so right click I just want to copy this come down here and just control V or right click and paste now that I have this here and it's not too crazy if it gets too crazy Microsoft Word doesn't handle this and all of the other ones will but it's always nice to just try so I'm gonna go back up to the mathematics button and press compute and calculate and it calculates this big fraction now sometimes these fractions will not change because of um, I, I guess they didn't expect people to be using this for larger uh, values so when you end up with uh, compounding uh, more than annually it comes up crazy and it won't work however if I'm in here I'm gonna go ahead and press compute again calculate and ta-da there's my answer, $26,630.30. And I can even format it by just plugging in my dollar sign, and I'm finished. And I would like to highlight that so it shows that it's my answer. Come up here, I'm going to, oops, wrong one. I want to highlight it in yellow. There we go. There's my answer. Okay, so that's the first way of computing this, and you'll notice this was the compounding annually at 3.2%, and it gave me the smaller number, which means that in 20 years from now, if I have something in a bank account that's $50,000, it only has the buying power of, in today's standards of $26,630. Or t Yep. Okay, so the other way of doing this is again copying this part, but instead of using the calculating features in Microsoft Word, we're going to come over here to Excel. To make Excel work like a calculator, we press the equal sign, and I'm just going to do Control V, and it pastes it in. Now I'm going to double check and make sure that everything looks good. Microsoft Excel can read all of that and calculate it. Uh, if you're using brackets, so if you have a bracket in here like this, it doesn't read it. It needs to use parentheses. Microsoft Excel can't understand in, uh, the brackets when you're calculating. Okay, so it looks like everything's good, so I'm going to press Enter, and there we go. Now I can come up here, and I want to change this from a number to dollars, and then I can copy, come back into, oops, come back into here, control V, paste it in, and there's my answer again, and it's formatted, and I'm going to highlight it. So that was my second option. The next option would be to use um, either the Wabbit Emu uh, <laughs> emulator, or you can use your own graphing calculator, or um, I don't recommend using scientific because then you have to plug everything in according to the order of operations, and so I personally would rather use a graphing calculator, or here's my our emulator. Oh, pardon me, that's, there we go. So now I'm going to plug in, I can either type with my mouse or in my number pad, five zero and sometimes you have to go slow when you're typing it in divide by so I'm using my number pad down here or I can of course use my mouse and I'm going to do parenthesis one plus point zero three two close parentheses and I have my carrot over here raise it to 20 years, press enter, there we go, sorry it took a little bit to get that up, and there's our answer, $26,630.30. Uh,
Okay, so that was the third way. And to answer that, you would then type it in instead of just copying and pasting something. 26, 630 point, and then we round this to the nearest penny, which is 30 cents, and again, highlight the answer. Okay, so that was the next way. And the final way is using the built-in function in Microsoft Excel. To make it calculate, again, I'm going to press equals. And we're going to use what's called the present value function. So I'm going to do PV, but I know this calculates negatively, so to uh, counteract that, I'm going to do negative PV. Open parentheses, it's asking for the right. Our rate is 0 0.032 comma, number of periods. This happens every year for 20 years. So there are 20 periods here. Payments, we're not making any payments into this. So I put zero. And the future value of this is fifty one two three thousand dollars Now I can close this by doing shift zero, uh, close the parenthesis, or Microsoft Excel understands we're at the end. Don't worry about the type, that's only referring to whether this is at the beginning or the end of the month, no need to worry. In fact, everything here in these brackets are optional. But we actually needed to put in the future value of $50,000. What will this be? There we go. $26,630.30. And in this one, it's already formatted as money. So when I copy Control v to paste it in, it's already formatted highlight it and there we go. So we have all of those ways and I hope this helped kind of uh, guide you on number three which seems to be one of those problems that just happens. Alright, good luck with this and email me if you have any questions.